All right, if you're using Google Sheets, you can use the text function. So we will type that out to take a number and then I'll put it in a specific format. So we'll start out with an easy one. We'll say, let's do two decimal places. So we'll give it the example of 0, 0, 0.00. Close that off with an ending quote and then a parentheses. And there we go. We've taken 12 and we've output 12.00. We'll drag that down and see that all of these inputs create an output just with two decimal places because that's what you told it to do. But there's something that's very important to understand and that is that this output is not a number. Sometimes you can use it like a number, so it's a little bit misleading. So you can still take B7 plus B8 and you will get the correct result. And that result, strangely enough, is a number because it's right aligned. But these left aligned amounts aren't numbers. And that will come to bite you later if you use them in more complicated formulas. But a way to check for that is to use the is number formula. So we're going to take a look at B7. Is that a number? And the answer is false. It's not. But let's just check A7 to see that's a true. So the text function, while it formats a number, also changes it to text. So keep that in mind as we go through these examples. Let's do some dates here. So we will say text. And these three dates, you'll see they're all in a different format. We want them to be the same. So we will grab the first one and we'll say, let's format it with the month first because I'm in the US. And you'll notice I put in two M's. So it did a leading zero, zero four. If you just do one M, it will just do four. And then we'll just do one day, even though you won't be able to tell difference because it's a 26th of April. But if it was the 6th of April, there would only be a six with no leading zero, right? And for the year, if you do two, it will just show 23. If you do four, it will show 2023. So let's keep that format. We'll hit enter. And when we drag this down, you will see that all three of these dates are the same. And you can tell that because we formatted them the same now. All right, let's come down and do US currency. But let's say you don't know exactly how to type this in. I'll include a link to this reference. Well, first I'll also include a link to the Sheets Help website that goes through these exact examples that we're going through. And from here you can get a copy, where is it? Of the shared sheet right there. But, but in that blog post, there's also a link to customformats.com. This is going to tell you all of these formats that you never knew you could use. But for now, let's go back and we'll use our own on currency. Let's go over to the text function. Let's try it. We'll, we will say A23. We'll say dollar sign zero comma zero zero zero. Hit enter and it formats it like we wanted. So dollar sign, thousand separator, no decimal. We're done with that. We'll move on now. Things get a little bit trickier. We're going to use this function to find a duration. First time it'll work, second time it won't. Let's go get the formula. I have it written out already on this other page. We start with the text function so we can format the output because times are very finicky, especially when you start feeding them into formulas. Let's paste this function and we'll talk about it. So it's saying, you run the text function on this amount. So it doesn't have to just be a cell reference. It can be a formula like we have here. So the difference between the ending and the starting time. And then format it as hours first and then minutes. So that's the output you're seeing here, blue font. We'll hit enter. And it worked in this example. So these are both on the same day, May 26, 2023. And they're almost three and a half hours apart. But if I copy this down, so we'll just drag it. It gives the same output for these two numbers. So that's really just showing the end of the result, right? What I had hoped for is that the hours would be in the hundreds or the thousands, right? Depending on the length of time. But this is really just the portion of a day for the duration. So what we can do is we can use an add-on. 
It is a paid add-on, but there's a seven-day trial period. It's called Time Diff. I will put a link to that in the description as well. And we will say, you know, I just want the output in hours and minutes, like I asked the text function for, but <laughs> didn't do it right. And I already have the starts and the ends highlighted. So we'll say calculate them from the active range. Thinks about it for a minute and it outputs as text, three hours and 28 minutes and 2,738 hours and 28 minutes. So if you want better output for formatted times, check out the time diff add on. But let's move on to the last example is that you can concatenate values. So let's say in this example, we want to want to concatenate 5.55 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. And concatenate is just a fancy word for join, right? And what you can do the simple way is to take 5.55 a.m. and then you can use the ampersand for as a shortcut for concatenation. And we can just put a space in there and then we'll say also do the value in A46. Hit enter. And this is what it looks like. Wah, wah. Guessing that's not what you want. If you want to join those and keep the formatting. So this is a good example of where regular formatting through the menus won't do it for you. You have to use the text function. Let's copy this formula that I have already done. And then we will paste it here and talk about it. All right, that outputs a lot better. Let's look at what we did. What we did was we said, look, let's take the time of 5.55 a.m. and I'll put it as text in this format, 555, and then we say AM, PM, and then we concatenate the AND with the spaces before and after again, and then the formatted second time. Hit enter, and that's the desired outcome that we were looking for. If you wanna learn more about the time diff add-on, this next video will give you a more in-depth look at how to use it. I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.